Alrighty, hello boys and girls and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. We're out here fishing so you know it's time to talk about some updates. Guys and girls, League's Trailblazer is a little bit less than two weeks away. As of the day I'm recording this, it is October 17th and we got a ton of juicy information regarding some of the areas and some of the things we're going to be able to unlock and like the progression progression of how we're going to do so. Now there's a lot that I'm, I'm glad I didn't make this video right away. I was, I was planning on making this video a little bit sooner, but I'm glad I didn't because just a couple days ago they updated it um, and basically they're like, yo, you guys pointed out a lot of things that you're right about and we need to uh, kind of fix some of those things. So we're going to go over those in depth. We're going to go over each uh, area, some of the unlocks, and some of the things that you can uh, potentially do in said area, because you're only going to get to pick a few. You're not going to get to pick every single area to unlock in the second league. So let's uh, take a second to swap over here real quick. Here we go. Uh, we're going to start in the um, top here in the unlocking areas. There's some of the new stuff up here, but I want to read some of the stuff they've kind of laid out for us to begin with. So everyone's going to start with access to two regions. You'll be able to unlock three more, so you're only going to, I think, five out of the total, yeah, right here it says there are access to five out of the nine total areas. You'll start at Missalin, which, as you know, is like Lumbridge, the beginner area, just like everybody else. Although, you're going to unlock, you're going to do some sort of tutorial? I don't know what that's going to be about, but apparently you'll unlock Karamja. Now, I was curious as to why, sorry, my computer keeps going off, because I keep stop fishing Monkfish. I just, I'm too good at it. Um, I don't know why they chose Karamja, but they kind of go into depth a little bit. Um, you'll have the option to... Um, choose either Asgarnia, Kandarin, Mauritania, the desert, the Fremic provinces, Tyrannin, or the wilderness. Um, as I said, though, you only get to choose five total. Now, like I said, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be tough to choose. Here's kind of a rundown of some of the things you'll be able to do. Like here's an overview of the area and some of the things that it'll tell you you'll unlock, like access to Al Karid, Port and Serum, uh, Barbarian Village. What's gonna be good in Barbarian Village? I don't know. The the UI is real clean. I gotta give Jagex that. Like these things look really good. Um, it'll give you some key info about the area, like notable locations, some dungeons, um, some of the things you'll unlock, and then probably the most potentially uh, juicy drops you can get in the uh, the said area. So, like I said, you'll start off in uh, Asgard or Mithalin, which is this little section right there. Oh, and you'll also get Varrock, or not Varrock, sorry, Fossil Island, Zanaris, and the Abyss. I still don't know what the Abyss is. I think it's apparently where you fight uh, the Abyssal Sire, but I've never done that before, so I don't freaking know. But Zanaris, that's going to be good. Fairy Rings, probably. Uh, lunar stuff. Or not Lunar stuff, but you know, the Draymond Staff. Fossil Island? I don't know why they're giving you Fossil Island. I guess because you're getting Varrock, and the only way to get to Fossil Island is from Varrock. That would be my guess. Um, you're not going to get to go to Al Karid though, Port Serum, Canifis, or the exit to Barbarian Village. You're going to have to unlock another area for that. So, like I said, unlocking Karamji you'll do after some sort of tutorial. Don't know what the tutorial is going to be. I'm trying to I'm trying to imagine what uh, the tutorial could possibly be. Probably just explaining, giving like a rundown, like because uh, if you played the first league, you're familiar that there there was a relic called Endless Endurance, which allowed you to run forever. You had unlimited stamina, and it was one of the first three choices. Now it was the clear, uh, perfect choice. Like it was the it was the far superior beginner relic. Like the other two relics were nowhere near good enough. And if you didn't choose the Endless Endurance one, you were just completely screwed because you would run out of stamina. Now that's a permanent unlock in this league, so everyone's gonna have that. So I'm wondering if the tutorial that they're talking about is going to be showing you how to unlock that relic that everyone's gonna have. I don't know. That's just my kind of my kind of guess. Um, so be that as it may, whatever this tutorial is gonna be, you uh, they, they chose Karamja because of uh, basically a sort of a balancing because the real the only real pull to Karamja at the early game is going to be like a rush to Fire Cape or Infernal Cape. Um, however, that's going to happen. A level 3 Infernal Cape, I'd love to see it. Never going to happen, but I'd love to see it. Uh, basically, like they're just saying here, is they just wanted to unlock it for free to balance everything out because they didn't want to. Basically, they're like, we're like, a, they're, we're, we're essentially Jagex's little puppets. They just want to see us race around and dance for their amusement, doing, uh, you know, level three challenges for fire capes and infernal capes until we uh, inevitably blow our pixelated brains out. Um, but that's neither here nor there. 
It uh, basically they, what they're saying is it resulted in an early lesson in area unlocks. So the player, like I said, probably teaching us how to do everything, um, the race to the fire capes, and uh, just wanted. To, oh, it also solves the player owned house issue by giving access to the player owned house portal from the beginning. I didn't even think about that. So then they give you a little bit of a rundown of Asgarnia, which is uh, the fr oh, it's a free to play world. Wait, so wait, wait, is this league gonna be available to free to play players? I thought they said you had to be a member though. Why did they say that? Free to play world, huh? Along with the island of Entrana, gross, pest control. So I guess this would be beneficial for maybe trying to get early uh, Void. Although, I mean, Void doesn't really have that many uses for the League, if I'm thinking. And then Troll count, uh, Country, which is going to, you know, making their way. If you want to go into Catherby, uh, and then that's going to be about it. So this one so far kind of seems like, what can you get from... Okay, Falador, that might be kind of useful. A Port Serum, would that, is that gonna be the only way to get access to charter ships? I wonder how that's gonna work. Oh, Draenor, oh man, okay. So I mean, again, early level stuff, that one might be pretty useful. Um, Kandarin, which kind of gives you access, ooh, the access to the gnome, so that's gonna be gliders, I'm betting. Uh, spirit trees, this is probably gonna be one you're gonna have to get. Ardune, oh yeah, dude, okay. Mourners, Ogres, Seer's Village, Nightmare Zone. Wait, the Nightmare Zone is restricted to players can instead obtain Nightmare Zone points by purchasing them for one coin apiece. Oh, so you're not going to be able to just sit there and AFK, but you can buy Nightmare Zone points, huh? That's interesting. Mauritania, so this is going to give you probably raids. Uh, Most of the Harmless, uh, Brain Dead Island, Dragon Tooth Island, and Harmony Island, and the Patrodamus Temple. Hmm, Berg de Roth, Dark Mire, so yeah, this is going to be for an end game one. Oh, Barrows? Man, okay, Moritani, that's going to be a hard... Because how can you do this without Barrows, right? Or I guess if you're not going for a uh, a PVM strategy, if you're going to... Or, you know what I mean, if you're going to go not for a PVM way, but I don't know how you would... Like, especially if you want to go like in the wilderness or anything, you're going to need better gear than just... I don't know. That's just my thinking. That's going to be a tough one to have. Um, to not have, I mean, rather, is to not do... Um, bears but maybe maybe i don't know uh can't the desert so this is going to be obviously the alcarid area calphite queen uh narda pollen beach so i guess if you're wanting some fast thieving xp i'm trying to think of any major benefits to this one the sorcerer's garden uh desert treasure oh okay so yeah ancients man so there's like i mean you're gonna have to be pretty picky here with what you're gonna do i didn't even think about that that's good uh, man Fremenic Provinces, so this is going to be Dagonoth Kings, uh, Relica, Fremenic Isles, Fremenic, I mean like the, the Helm of Netsana, which is like the best in slot helmet. How are you going to, without Fremenic Island, I don't freaking know, Lunars? I'm, I'm, I'm imagining Lunars probably because that whole thing is probably branched into one thing with the Moon Clan Island. Uh, Fremenic Provinces, yeah, that's going to be, char wait, Charter Ships? Oh, so you can probably only Charter Ship to the ones that you have unlocked throughout the thing. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, several so shortcuts to the number if you've unlocked them. That's kind of what I thought. Turn up, tur okay, so this is going to be Elvland, uh, probably the Gauntlet. Oh, Zolra. A lot of people are going to want to do Turnun for Zolra. Uh, yeah, oh, if you want the fruit tree patches. Oh, Zalcano. This is going to be a big one, too. This is going to be if you're feeling risky, though. This is going to be very end game stuff, you know? Although, I don't know if you could, I mean, you wouldn't have access to crystal weaponry. You wouldn't have access to, like, any of those places. That's going to be Underground Pass, probably. I mean, not that you would want that. And then you have just straight up the Wilderness. This is probably going to be an easy no for me. Um, the Wilderness is treated a little bit differently, however. Um, instead of just... Um, so basically, there's no, like, if... You can still be attacked by other players, obviously. But if you do, it's not treated like a regular PvP death. Instead, you are just treated as a... Uh, like a monster killed you, so you just drop your stuff. I don't think you... I don't think they get all of your loot. I think it's just on the ground, you get a gravestone, just like it is in the regular, or just not like it's in the regular game, but it's like if you died to a regular monster, is what I meant to say. Um, the wilderness is in, included in its entirety. No last man standing, which makes sense. You'll be able to face off against the Chaos Elemental, KVD, Corp Beast, and getting access to Mage. Oh, so yeah, this is going to be, without the Mage Cape, a lot of things are going to be a lot more difficult. Like Zolra, for instance, in the uh, raids. Wait, which one of these have? Oh! I was gonna say there's no um, there's no core end at all because that was what the whole first league was based off of, but so you're the only raid you're gonna have access to is um, the Theater of Blood if you choose Mauritania. I didn't even think about that because there's no core end whatsoever. There, um, 
Deaths will be behave differently in the wilderness when completing in the league. PvP deaths will be treated like a PvM death. Your lost items moving to a gravestone and the gravestone moving to your respawn location. So, the wilderness is going to be a little less dangerous. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry boys to interrupt the video, but I just... I thought that was my freaking hair, oh. but it's not! Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> so that's going to be maybe a little bit more of an incentive to get the wilderness because people can still rag you, people can still PK you and grief you, but it's going to have a lot less complications than it would normally. So that's that's interesting. How did I uh, how did I only deposit half of my fish there? I don't know. So now that we've kind of covered some of the basics, I kind of want to show you guys really quickly. Am I still on the screen here? I am. Okay, great. I kind of want to show you guys really quickly the uh, some of the updates. This is why I'm glad I didn't um, make this video right away. So some of the things they've noticed differently, like in, in addition to the information they've given previously, they've like they overlooked some of the uh, so to gain some of these points for uh, league points for unlock relics and unlock new areas, you have these tasks. So they added some tasks like purchasing barrels glows from the Colormance chest, obviously recipe for disaster, very big deal, very big part of the early to mid game. Um, some of the stuff in Kandarin, they just completely overlooked the Arjun Diary. GG Jagex, I guess. Uh, and then they made some quests. So some quests are unlocked automatically, and some quests are not unlocked automatically. So when you, if you choose to unlock the Kandarin area during the league, you will automatically complete Swan Song, Guard of Tranquility, Creature Fangus Shrine. I'm imagining because those all take place in different areas, such as uh, Garden Tranquility clearly takes place mostly in Varrock, Creature Finkenstrain, Finkenstrain, Moritania. Don't know what those have to do with Kandarin, though. Uh, there's so much, like, back, you know, there's so much behind the scenes that you have to think about, like, because everything is so connected through this world. And, like, the things that you have to think about that are unconnecting now and like what that affects is like mind-boggling to me. So I don't know how Jack is keeping up with all that. This is what I was thinking about the 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 uh, what my ma my brain just completely blew apart. The charter ships. Sorry, Cathy and Port Kazar trade members now will now start granite. Don't know what that's gonna be for. Probably I'm assuming a quest or something they just couldn't like. Because I'm, I'm I'm assuming granite is only available like in the quarry, and if you can't get to Al Karib, I don't know what to do there. Um, in addition to the information they've given previously, they've now got Candor and Diaries, and uh, you unlock some benefits for that. So instead of the information they've given previously, the following diary task in the Western Provinces will now be completed upon unlocking Candoran. So some, because some of the things you can only do like in the Gnome Stronghold, stuff like that. So like I'm saying, or like I said, a lot of these things you just have to think about. It's gonna be interesting to see. And I think that's what kind of what Jagex is talking about here is they're just so excited to see what we're gonna do because there's just so many different ways that this can go. I'm so excited for the second league, and I hope you guys are too. Comes out or they, uh, the first day of the league is the 28th of October, so a little bit less than two weeks away. And uh, let me know what you guys plan to do. I, I'm, I still don't have a plan per se. I'm just excited. I don't know what I'm gonna unlock first. I don't know the areas I'm gonna go to, uh, but I, I, I have some ideas, some full blue. So, not foolproof plans, some uh, some inklings of things that may benefit me, I don't know. Like you guys know, I'm not very into the whole combat part of this game, although I tried to take a combat approach in the Twisted League and I kind of uh, fell flat for it. So I might try to go major skilling. Clue Scrolls was a big deal in the first league. Don't know if they'll be as uh, pertinent in this one, considering you can only go to certain areas. I don't know how that's gonna unlock with unlocks and stuff, but we'll see. Um, let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching this video. Leave me a like, hit subscribe if you want. We're back, uh, hopefully for good. Videos should be coming out daily again, sorry for the long breaks and some of those. I know we went like four days without a video, five days without a video here and there, and I'm sorry, but we should be back. Hardcore Army went up yesterday, go check it out if you haven't. We're still alive, obviously, because I'm right here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you very soon, hopefully tomorrow at noon. Thank you guys for watching. I love you guys, but until then.